Lekken Greg Vegan Camp, the 1st of October 2020. It's wet season and it's a sunny day. That means I need to wash some clothes. So I will be using some kaffir lime leaves, already crushed a little bit inside a small cotton bag, and washing nuts, of course. Harvest of lime and passion fruit from the ground, tree dropped or plant dropped. This is the pumpkin harvest from the rice straw field, rice straw hill, small hill. Old coconuts from mum house, garden cucumbers, a bagged watermelon. This watermelon just grew in the front of the house, like unintentionally. I just think we just threw some watermelon seeds and it just grew by itself. The bagging is there to protect it from bugs. Uh, we haven't had any successful watermelons here yet, but I will need to remove the bag before it gets too big. Another lucky plant. I don't think we have thrown any tomato seeds. Maybe a bird pooped here at some time and then the tomato is growing. We already have one little one, two small ones and some flowers. During the wet season it's, um, it's really hard to dry your clothes. So you need to plan it very well, like wash it in the morning and then you have like a time window of three to four hours from 10 to 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. where you can dry your clothes and then usually in the afternoon the rain comes again and the moisture is like really high in the morning and in the evening so you just need to, you have that time window to dry your clothes and then put it in a box yeah and because there's like mold growth everywhere so I've been also like cover burning the woods uh, around also in the room where we sleep, like the poles, even though they're like painted, the mold growth is there anyway. It can get quite moldy uh, if you don't have like super proper ventilation and or, or direct sunlight. And I've never experienced so much rain and so much moisture being saved into the soil as we currently have. The last three years have been very, very dry. So this is my first ex first hand experience where there's like, where you can just take a, a spade, is it called a spade? Uh, and just put it into the ground and it just goes through. It's a quite amazing experience. You can also use like a spade to take away the banana, young bananas and just plant new bananas. Bananas are arriving again. There's been no banana, almost no bananas the last two months. This is the the red banana. There are like three. I've, I'm thinning out the bananas to try to make them make better bananas. There are like four now, maybe too much. But now I'll be just taking the young shoots when they're big enough and have some root like this and it will be higher and bigger and have some root system down there and I will just split them and plant them in the garden. Here is my breakfast. Lucky that there are bananas here. When they're picked they're green or maybe some of them are like already getting yellow and then we need to bag them otherwise the bugs will eat them. And these are super nice. They are a different type of apple banana. It's like the round apple banana. It has more similar taste to Cavendish, but still have apple banana-ish. Uh, but uh, they're quite nice, but a bit smaller. When these guys are ripe, they're just like super sweet and nice and just a hint of sourness. It's so nice. 10 small bananas for breakfast. It's just a super nice generic breakfast. And when you experience a drought of bananas for two months, you just appreciate bananas much more. And I must say that maybe bananas are just my primary main food that is just nice because you can just, if you want, you can do a mono banana in uh, like in one day. If you only have bananas, you can just do it because it's just they just provide you with energy and satisfaction and uh, unless you like fill yourself with bananas every day for many days it's not good but if you have like one day with bananas it just feels great also if you have 
uh, problems with your stomach. I mean, bananas are just like, go, like they're just nice. They're generic. They give you energy. Compared, like watermelon is nice for breakfast too because it just flushes you out. But it just does, doesn't provide you. You feel full, but you'll be get hungry very very soon after you eat watermelon but after like 10 small bananas you just have energy to do a lot of things and then when you're hungry you just eat up a, a, a couple of more bananas and then everything is fine so yeah I think that bananas are super super nice the best staple around and they grow really cool in a cool way you can just plant them and they're really easy to grow and the problem right now might be that they're like if it's if it, if the bananas are growing like that, that they're putting a layer on top of each other, they will outgrow the soil where they were planted. So at some point, you, maybe you'll need to like take out uh, some of the bananas and dig them down deeper in a new spot, and then they will get good bananas again. This combined with drought has probably made the bananas uh, not produce much currently I've been waiting for these for two months now and you can see like they were harvested two days ago and they are already uh, getting yellow you can see already cracking this one will probably not ripen as well but it will be quite edible I think because it's so mature already and you can see the apple bananas are like big and fat and this is what we want this is like the best normally I have like bananas up to here but now I'm just like craving bananas like crazy so I understand when people come to Thailand uh, once a year and they're here for one or two weeks then, then they are just like crazy about bananas, I understand that. It's not the only thing we are storing in the soil, we are, we are not only storing water but we are storing a lot of carbon. Like everybody is speaking about carbon and one of the solutions is no tillage, no plowing the soil. So when you don't plow the soil, the roots like will grow big and they will just grow into the soil and the roots what are they made of carbon and water so and also the that is the plant taking the carbon from the from the from the air and putting it into the soil together with the water and feeding the microorganism down there so i mean you can see oh this is a big tree and it stores a lot of carbon don't cut the tree but it's just as much important what's going on under the ground so carbon water energy under the soil the, the soil is alive it's uh, very important to to understand how the soil works and then we can re-establish what we have destroyed this area is the small rice straw hill and the leftovers of pumpkin plants and cucumber plants and this is how it looks and I think there are like two pumpkins left here and maybe a couple of cucumbers. But it has been uh, quite okay, this small area, growing a lot of pumpkin. And I'm actually trying to grow more here. I planted a couple of seeds around. See what it, how it will grow at the, like this is like the first season of the pumpkin. Maybe we'll have another season of the pumpkin. One of the pumpkins that is not quite ready yet to be get picked. Looking forward for the beans. A couple of months, they'll be ready. So this is one of the red banana palms I've planted in a new location. Clear skies and in clear and nice air. It's so lovely. Rainy season for the wind and green everywhere. Small patch of uh, pumpkin experimenting with pumpkin. This is a uh, cassava that has been uh, turned around just to mark the pumpkin so they won't be cut by accident. Another patch of pumpkin but they've been eaten by some kind of insect or snail or something. A lot of snails right now. Snail invasion. A red banana, the most mature child. The banana guardians trying to protect the avocado trees, the young avocado trees. And another red banana and I don't remember if this is red, maybe it's red too. Young avocado and two young avocados. And in the last patch I hope they will grow from seed. 
sometimes when you transplant plants, they don't grow as well as if you just put the seed into the soil. The mango trees have been heavily pruned. You can see all the dried out branches under the trees. People believe that if you prune the, the trees, they will be more healthy. And that might be true. At least because they have an open canopy in the, inside, the, the air circulation is better. And that's how you do a conventional orchard of uh, like fruit trees. So you have an open can canopy and the tree won't grow like really tall. It's easier to harvest the fruit, stuff like that. Maybe even when you like cut the tree, it will get stressed because, oh my God, maybe I will not survive another year because somebody is cutting me down. And may, that may, might also increase the flowering and then fruit production, of course. I haven't seen a ripe papaya for some time right now, so I'm also very excited about getting some papayas to eat. But there's like a lot of papaya salad available, especially because some of the papaya trees die and then you need to take the fruit and it doesn't really ripen up when the tree dies. These and the ones you saw before will be very ripe and very nice to eat. And you can see there are more flowers, there are just like a lot of coming up. This is one of the benefits of like, one of the many benefits of rainy and wet season. A lot of fruit coming up. Small orange one, maybe ready to get picked. Maybe just another day.